How's it going everyone? In this video, we're gonna go over how to make clouds look really good, really fast. Uh, so let's just jump straight in. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a camera. Uh, if you haven't already got a camera, let's rotate this on the X. Yeah, okay. And let's just move this like 10 meters up. Um, okay. And then let's just set up true sky scene. So right away, if we just head into performance and click camera around the region, we should see that we immediately get given uh, a sky. And what I'm going to do on my end is just make sure I've got transparent turned off because I keep turning that on. Uh, and the other thing that you might want to do is in the top menu, we just want to go and click always. And this will just mean that our compositor layer will work inside camera or outside camera. Um, now I'm going to change the camera from perspective to panoramic, uh, field of view 235 and lens 13, something like that. This is just so that we can kind of see the whole sky as we're doing stuff. Um, under effects, that's at the negative three. Okay. So we're going to bring clouds in. Um, by default, you might find that they're, like, they're quite mushy or like not super visible or something like that. Um, and this can be dealt with by disabling fast global illumination. So right now, fast global illumination is just on for performance, but it doesn't necessarily have to be on. Um, it's just there for performance. I mean, might actually turn this off, uh, but yeah, okay. So you can see that now there's clouds visible, okay? Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them like 12 kilometers up or something like that, just so that we can see a bit more of them off the ground. And we can do some things with these. Uh, I'm gonna change the cloud amount to 25, just to give us a bit more sort of smaller clouds, more of them in the space. Um, and then we're gonna go back into primary and we're going to do something in here. So aerosols, we're just going to set this to like 0.25 and that'll give us a little bit more haze in the air and then we're just going to increase the anistropy a bit. And bring this up to like 0.37 so we can see what's going on here. Now, if you want highly detailed clouds, um, you want the volumes to have a lot more information in them and you want to be able to sort of start casting god rays and things then the best way to do this is to come into the volume section and we're just going to increase the max steps let's just go to 32 for now and you can see that we're getting a little bit more shadow here um, if we move the sun around a touch you can see that we've got a little bit of haze that's appearing uh, and if we sort of see move the sun down here you can see that we're getting these rays of light casting out underneath that cloud. Um, we can go into clouds and we can just like increase the god ray intensity. And what this will do is it'll just add something that the camera doesn't see, but the volume registers is more density, which will allow you to sort of block more light, which is where we get these from. Um, if this isn't as prominent as you'd like it to be then the simple fix for this is to just come to light paths and set the volume to like two or one in some cases you can go to one um, again it depends on the look that you're going for but if you do add these uh, reduce these volume bounces then you'll start to see that you get a bit more interaction with the clouds and the, and the way the light's casting off these so if we come to clouds and maybe increase the cloud coverage a bit uh, and maybe increase the cloud size, then we can come back down into the sort of the lighting tab and just move the sun around until we find an area where we can see rays are coming through. And you can see them in the background over here. We're getting some shadow rays. You can see them here. Um, if we increase the elevation, we might start to see some come across the top which we can, we can see this little beam of light here, some here. Again, if this isn't enough, it's just a case of increasing the maximum steps. So if we go to like 64, you can see that we're gonna get more volume steps, which is gonna create more information in the volume. 
um, thus more things to block the light. Um, so like if we sort of zoom in here on this bit down here, we can start to see that we're getting rays of light that are actually coming through here and we can see the shafts going through here. Let's go back and uh, put the whole thing in the render region. Uh, if we reduce the density, we're going to get less uh, thickness in the clouds. Um, if we increase the height of the clouds, so like where they actually are in the sky, like 20 kilometers, then what this is going to do is it's going to push the clouds closer to the, the source of light uh, and allow more atmosphere for light to travel through so you will get more rays that are appearing um, if we come back to clouds and sort of reduce this down a little bit maybe we can see it a little bit better there we go yeah so we're getting some dark areas here some dark areas here some dark areas here um, and this is essentially how to start like creating clouds and getting a thick atmosphere and and, and uh, some details in this i mean you can crank this all the way up i mean you, you you shouldn't put them to 40 kilometers but if you do put them to 40 kilometers then you'll notice that you get oh let's get the sun there it is more clearly dark areas that are coming down uh, and again if we sort of bring the sun down a little bit into the sky you can see that we're getting shadow rays that are being cast here and if we sort of move the sun around, you can see that we're getting these shadow rays again. Um, another thing to bear in mind is that the closer you are to the ground, the less effect the atmosphere has on uh, has on you. Uh, this is just like when you are on the ground. In reality, like in real life. You can see a very long distance, the air is clear, but as you go further up, like into the sky, you can see that you get this mist and haze effect, and if we put the clouds back in, you can see now that where the shadows are contacting the ground, you're getting that contrast between the light and the shadow, um, and this is just how volumes work, this is just how light works. Um, so like if we really increase the density of this, you can see how that's affecting that. And if we bring the density all the way down, you can see sort of how those light rays are being cast. Um, so if we give the density a 0.5, and then just like move the sun around, you can see now that we are in total shadow, we can see the shadow up here. If we move the sun even higher up a little bit, you can see that we start to come out of this shadow. And this is where we get these light bright light areas um, or areas of bright light you can see a contact on the ground here and again if we just move the sun around you can see that we're getting these effects again and this one's really we're getting really strong effects here with this one um, and if we sort of render this out so let's have a look at my render output yeah 10 ATP that should be fine 128 samples that should be totally fine so let's just render this out and there we have it that's the the render so yeah we've got some light shafts coming through from this cloud above we've got some nice detailed clouds um, lots of information and, and, and shapes going on here um, and that's yeah that's essentially how we can quickly uh, get some nice clouds showing in the sky um, couple of things to understand is obviously with this being a volume based system it relies heavily on like how many steps and things that you, you you're processing um, so like if we do two volume light bounces the shadow is going to be a little bit less uh, contrasty and that's just because there is a volume between the cloud and the ground uh, so the light bounces that happen inside are going to brighten up that area um, if we want even more 
like so if we go to like 32 then we're going to have less volume steps which means that we're going to get less shafts you can see here sort of lit up because we've got less volume data or less volume information and if we go to 64 steps you can see this area has gotten a little bit darker and again like we're getting this area here lighting up if we go to something like uh, 256 steps then the render is going to be a lot slower um, because we're calculating more steps now uh, but the information the details and the data that's happening in the volume there is more of that so you will get more steps which means that you can get uh, more shadows more sharper shadows and things like that that are happening and i'll quickly i'll show you guys that one in a second um, and then if this is not performant enough then you can actually just increase the sort of step rate um, so if we set this to something like two you can see that this is opening up some more uh, or less steps are sort of sort of being cast here and if we go to like four then again we're opening this back up and we're speeding things up um, generally speaking more steps will provide uh, more consistent results um, with a sort of a higher step rate um, but for most sort of renders most people should only really need anywhere between 24 and 48 steps um, like if we go to 48 with a step rate of 0 0.01 like this should give ample source of performance and quality uh, at those levels and then the other caveat to understand here is that the more steps you have the thicker a volume is going to behave so like if we have eight steps the clouds are going to look softer that's because there are less steps in the clouds um, if we go to 16 you can see that we've got sort of getting a bit more information here and these look good enough for most um, so like I say 24 to 48 are going to give you really thick clouds um, with a lot of information but you might get less light shafts um, if we go to like 32 which is usually what I do for sort of like the um, the promo renders and things like that then let's move this down to like 10 again and sort of just like move the sun it will update a lot quicker um, and one thing that you might think to do is like in your viewport just like set this to like a high step amount um, or sorry step rate and this will make the viewport a lot more performant um, so like if we go to something like eight here so it's a, it's a factor of that you can see that the, the, the viewport is updating much quicker but then if we go into something like a, a render the detail will come back so yeah as you can see here now in the render there's a bit more uh, data or, or sorry details um, than in the viewport so if we look at the viewport we can see it's a lot softer and if we sort of pull this back up we can see that the actual details are a lot higher now um, and our light shafts aren't as prominent here um, so like we would we would want to go like maybe 48 steps or something like that and view this and yeah you can see like with this one we've gone uh, 48 steps with the previous one we were 32 steps uh, our render time was 140 on this one our render time on this one was 219 but you can see that these light shafts are way more obvious and sort of like the details in the clouds um, there is more details in these clouds that you can see here so that's something to bear in mind um, you can you can like I mean if you sort of send it to the moon and do like uh, 256 steps then render times are going to be insane um, so let's give that a try and there we go with uh, what was it 256 256 steps so 256 steps is frankly for most people an obnoxious amount of time to wait for a render uh, 10 minutes 10 30 uh, 10 minutes 30 but you can see the difference between the two um, is quite drastic you know and, and like I said earlier the volumes are going to become 
Dancer. Uh, there's going to be more information, as in those steps within that volume. So things are going to look a little bit thicker. Um, and in that case, you might want to reduce like the overall density uh, of your clouds when you're doing this, if you are planning on doing like, 256 steps. Um, and obviously bear in mind, like I am using a 3090. Um, so it's not the slowest card in the world, but it's also not the fastest card in the world. So anyone who's sort of on a more modern GPU, 4070, 4080, 4090 are going to be much quicker. Um, most of the 50 series range is is going to be even quicker. I mean, like, double, uh, double, triple the performance. Um, so, you know, you could be looking at, like, on a 5090, maybe four minutes for this render. Um, so there is something to bear in mind. Um, this product isn't for everyone. Like, if people just don't have the GPU or the time, like, I wouldn't recommend picking it up um there are faster products out there that will provide good lighting results but if you want the most accurate if you want one that's going to give you as much uh, detail and precision as possible this is where this one sort of shines um but yeah that's essentially how clouds work um how the atmosphere works and how to sort of make really really uh god ray like uh god ray like renders and again just to sort of reiterate and touch on things like the higher you're up you are in the atmosphere the more obvious you're going to notice like these effects um like if you get the contrast between the ground and and stuff like that you're going to notice um these effects way more uh, and just sort of moving the sun around is going to give you like here we can see like there's god rays coming through here and there's god rays coming through here and here and here and here and this is at 64 steps which is is significantly faster than than 256 um and if we sort of like bring the volume density down something like 0.2 you can see that these clouds aren't as harsh anymore but you're still getting those rays of light coming through um and if we if we sort of like if we just put this at 100 meters above the ground like those rays aren't as obvious anymore because we're at a more oblique angle to them so like we're seeing the ray above us and we're seeing the ray here whereas at three kilometers you know we're seeing the rays actually casting down onto the ground uh, so, so these are just things to bear in mind when you are wanting to create awesome looking clouds um, but yeah, that's an overview of how clouds work. That's an overview of how to get really good looking clouds. That's an overview of uh, how to create these these god rays. Um, you know, the more sorts of aerosols that you add to the air, the more prominent this is going to be. Uh, if we sort of take the aerosols all the way down, you'll still be able to see them. They're just not going to be as obvious. Um, so I'd recommend, like, if you're really looking for that hazy, glowy, god ray sky, aerosol level of like 0.25, sky anisotropy of anywhere between 0.25 and 0.5 is going to get you this look. Um, and then on top of that, another thing, which I might touch on in a separate video, is like if you enable in render passes um, your volume direct, then you can use that as a mask to sort of, because that will just render out like these light rays that's all that's going to render out uh, everything that's in the shadow is technically indirect so you won't that pass won't render that out and then you can just take that and use a mix color set to add and just adjust how much you want to add that to the final composition and, and these rays will be way more prominent um yeah so that's essentially clouds and how they work if you've got any questions join our discord and ask there um other than that i think we'll see you in the next one